Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. It's upgrade time. The nacelles get detached, the controls get programmable matter, and the spore drive gets a gooey interface. And the badges, oh, you're going to want some of those. Burnham goes rogue, Book gets rescued, and Giorgio goes shopping. With prices so low, you might lose your head. So, you're telling me that there's no way we could have detachable in the cells just yet. I, I, I don't, un oh, the light. Hey, so, good day, everybody. Welcome to Starfleet Underground. Thank you for joining us for another wonderful show here. We're being brought to you by Section 31. Yes, they're still around, believe it or not, and they're still funding stuff to us. And we're not going to complain too much because I have a feeling that they're responsible for us getting this Defiant Class ship, which I really, really still love. So that's a good thing. I'm here with our crew. At first, I'll go ahead and introduce our science officer. Hi, I'm Heather Ferris. I'm the science officer. And Captain, uh, have you seen Squirrely and uh, Q? I can't find... E oh, there are the Tribbles. They're using your bodega as a water park. It's so cute. <laughs> they kind of That's just that. gross. <laughs> you know. Uh, get into I, that, I love I, I love your name for the bidet. It just sounds so much cooler. <laughs> that is just gross. gross. <laughs> oh my god! They're having oh. fun. <laughs> Anything that's been near Nathan's butt should not be a water park. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Told that to the tribbles. <laughs> uh, oh my god! You guys are starting off already. I'm glad that HR doesn't have us on there. Uh, first off, I want to know also before we move down the line, what is a tur a tur a turcopal a turpo a turcopal that you guys had is supposed to be there for for coming up next week for Thanksgiving? Turkey ketchup and turcopal. No, it, it, some somebody on the ship. I haven't found out who yet has decided to make a turkey triple combination. <gasps> So it's a turcopole, and I'm not going to eat it. I'm just telling you it's, that now. No, it's called a turbo. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh. See, you're the one that did it. Oh, well, thank you. This yeah, brings it. us to our, our, our computer guy. <laughs> a, tr a turbo, a turbo, a turbo, a turbo or a turbo? <laughs> yeah. Why the hell did you decide to make something like that, Patrick? I didn't. The the, tur the turkey was horny. It's, just, it's all a turbo and... <laughs> If you knew what it was, that <laughs> means you made was it. Horny. <laughs> the turkey was horny. Okay, great. Oh God. <clears throat> well, that's what you get when you when you bring in a turkey from Rijek Five. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what the, the hell? The triple didn't know what he was getting himself into. No. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Oh man. He got pecked good. <laughs> <laughs> That's you the pecking get, order for you. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys are just no. <laughs> okay. Uh, our computer guy, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Patrick. I'm number one. I'm your computer tech, and I'm your uh, interspecies liaison. <laughs> Does that include turkeys and dribbles? Apparently. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the, the ones on Rijek 5 are sentient, so, they, you know, they, they talk. <laughs> you know, he said he was horny. I said, well, not me, bitch. <laughs> so. And then it found a triple. Okay. Then it found a triple. Then it found a triple. That makes sense. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, the circle of life. Mm. Yeah, but the, the, triple, the triple didn't survive the birth, though. <laughs> Oh Even though God. we have the crew we have, I have here, I still wouldn't trade you guys, but you, oh, if I didn't work that deal with that with HR, uh, I would have to get the morality clause because I don't think that having interspecies mating like that, first of all, I don't even know how the hell that's scientifically possible, but I guess it is because the thing is in the kitchen, it's naked and it's sitting in a bath of gravy grinning. <laughs> So, <laughs> had a smile yeah. on his face. You couldn't take off anyhow. No. <laughs> I finally understand why the HR department knows all of our names and knows us like intimately. I understand why now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And they're, they're confused because they really think the crew is bipolar. But that's another story. We're now talking <laughs> with our engineer. Hello. 
Ay, ay, ay. You know, there's a light on top of the warp drive that opens when you open the access door. It turns on. It's supposed to turn on. It's not turning on. How, I, I, I got to figure that out. It's been driving me crazy all, all day so far. Wait, are there, no. Are there feathers around it? Maybe one of the turkeys got in. I, Don't hit the button. It's an airlock release. <laughs> It's got an important <laughs> warning light that you open the hatch and the light's supposed to come on. And when you close it, everyone jokes that the light's still on when you close it, but it's supposed to turn off. <laughs> and then you open the hatch again and it comes on again. But it's not coming on. It's driving me insane right now. Well, that's a short trip. So, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. As it is for most of us. I, I, think, I think I walked right into that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I deserve that. Hi, guys. I'm the Rocky. I'm the engineer. Oh. Okay, we, we've definitely been having a lot of fun here because the holidays are coming up. So <laughs> the hollow days, <laughs> well, you're in rare form. What the hell have you been doing other than with the turkeys there, Patrick? <laughs> like you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> Rijack five turkeys are um, if you smoke them, they're they're um, aphrodisiacs. I, ha- I have to try that. Hey, uh, bring some down to my quarters. Okay. Yes. Okay. We're going to first talk since you're in rare form. Is any communications concerning corrections this week? I did not see any subspace communications come across, but let me just check one more time to make sure. Computer? Nope. Everything looks clear. So apparently we had a good, uh, good cast. Outstanding. That brings us then to the news of the week. You have any news for us there, Heather? Uh, let's see. So there is a new Loot Crate style option available for all of the Star Trek fans out there. And if you guys want to get a Star Trek themed t-shirt once a month, go check it out. We'll provide the link below. And um, some of the shirts look cool. Some of them look okay. You know, they just like look like normal t-shirts that you would see and everything and they have a um some type of star trek logo or design or emblem or something on them so yeah that's my news for the week i don't need any more t-shirts i have so many it's like every i go, I go into work and the guy's like how many t-shirts do you star trek t-shirts do you have and i'm like a lot <laughs> he's like you i know you every time i see you it's a different one. Oh, cool and wait i just went off somewhere mentally <laughs> Nathan, Nathan is yes. thinking of Patrick in a t-shirt I, and I only a say, t-shirt I, I was say, ha, ha, the t-shirt he's not wearing but he has quite the collection <laughs> no 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 he's just wearing the t-shirt and nothing just else only a t-shirt and a sock show those legs <laughs> okay smoke, smoke a turkey both of you smoking turkey <laughs> strutting your stuff <laughs> Okay, well, I have some news to get on a different subject. Yeah, you, you walk around with your T-shirt. He goes, yeah, my T-shirt goes to the ground damn right. When you see me, you won't frown. Damn right. When you see me, you won't frown. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your news? Well, that's why the turkey was laughing. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the Critics' Choice Association has their inaugural Critics' Choice Super Awards, which honors the best in genre TV and movies. And the Star Trek franchise is uh, receiving their first ever Legacy Award. Uh, yeah, right? Also, we've got seven nominations for the following shows. we got Star Trek Discovery had two nominations. Star Trek Picard had two. And Lower Decks had three. So the Super Award ceremony will air on the CW Network on Sunday, January 10th at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And streaming the next day on the CW app for free. Cool. And just just one quick correction. Picard has one nomination, uh, not two nominations. Um, no, he's got Picard has nominated for Best Science Fiction Fantasy Series. And then Patrick Stewart was nominated for Best Actor in a Science Fiction Series. So that'd be two. OK, I stand corrected. <laughs> and what is Picard and Discovery going up against? Uh, they will be going up against the Mandalorian, Outlander, Raised by Wolves, Upload, and What We Do in the Shadow for Best Series. Have you guys seen What We Do in the Shadows? Yeah, I love that Love it. That's funny. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. And Lower Decks, do you know what cartoon, I'm thinking of one specifically that that's going against, or Uh, that's competing against? Archer. Yes, uh, Archer. Bojack Horseman, Big Mouth. And if you haven't seen Big Mouth, you have to see Big Mouth. It's hysterical. Okay. Um, 
Central Park, Harley Quinn, and Rick and Morty for Best Animated Series. And did you know, just a little bit of trivia here, what we do in the shadows, the um, like the lead vampire, the old vampire that they um, that they brought into the, their house, that was Doug Jones. That was Saru. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a little crossover there. That's so cool. That's going to be pretty awesome. You know, the, um, of course, we're going to be pulling for Star Trek, but it's going to be strong competition. Not really. I mean, you know, Star Trek will kick their butts. <laughs> we hope we'll put them all on <laughs> stun. <laughs> How about you, Rocky? You have any news for us? Oh, man, the the Christmas uh, shopping sprees are coming at my email in such a hard fashion. But but come on, Anovos is really trying to get me. They got the full on like super accurate discovery Star Trek uniform, but they had a they had a sale going for the last second for like seven hundred bucks, and then they said after this it's going up to twelve ninety nine, and my credit card almost jumped at it. I'm like, oh my god, I, I you know if I was in better shape, I probably would fit those things better, and maybe I would have bought one. But uh, I'm just like after the the extra COVID weight, uh, or or I'm just not getting my fat ass on the exercise machine as often as I should. Yeah, I did. I passed on that one, but it was like, gosh, they're 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 coming at you with the amazing prices uh that i mean i i, I couldn't afford that shit man what are you gonna do it's, it's expensive yeah, yeah they I mean, had they're the good phaser. quality but oh beautiful quality the phaser was 650 i'm like wow that's uh, does it actually stun people because i would buy it if it actually stunned people it better for that much i mean wow so yeah the the, the that stuff just blows my mind and uh, of course if you really want the deal you go look online for the actual people who create them themselves who are actually s- super skilled and uh, you might get a, a better deal but uh, i wish you luck if you in your cosplay i mean actually if you're a badass cosplayer you do it, do it all yourself i i look at a sewing machine and i'm like it, it reminds me of heather and the replicator you know well, you know what, Wait, a- what? Huh? <laughs> no that's not he didn't say vibrator heather he said replicator uh, damn it <laughs> Uh, you know, there's yeah. um on on not Etsy, but on eBay, there is a, a retailer on eBay who does um, really good Trek cosplay costumes, and they're they're in, they're not that expensive either. Oh, okay. Well, that's that that the deals are out there. You just got to go find them. Yeah. Uh, do you um do you know the person's name so I can look them up? Uh, I'll, I'll have to find that info and, later. Yeah, later. I don't. I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't know it. Okay. Also out there on the deals coming at me through the emails, the Captain's Collection is uh is out there on Blu-ray, and it's quite the collection. It's actually four of the Shatner documentaries and uh, another disc that is just extras and extended interviews, and uh, that's out on Amazon, and uh, it's produced by Shout Factory, which if you're collecting the, the DVD specials, Shout Factory is a pretty big name in, in the, the quality stuff that's out there. So that looks like a lot of fun, too, if you want to stock a stuffing. And... Uh, mm. And I don't know if I want to pass along my news about Anson Mount joining METI, which is the messaging extraterrestrial intelligence uh, people. It's like SETI, except it's they, they transmit. So instead of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, they want to actually say, hey, guys, we're over here. And uh, and how you doing? You know, they're like hailing frequencies are like open, bitches. Oh, my God. They're <laughs> going to attract the Borg. And and Anson Mount wants to be the face of, uh, of them, I guess. Or they invited him to be part of it. But it's, it's actually pretty cool when you think about uh, they got a really cool article on TrekMovie.com and a little video that they had. The, the, one of the guys in the video was just talking about how you know you know the distance we, we transmit from now to then it's not the distance so much is the actual time for the message to tra- traverse the distance because we can say hey yo what's up we're over here and then by the time they get a message saying you know you, when, once you get sup back to you they text sup back and uh, and it's like 100 and 300 and how many years later because we're already dead so it takes a little time to get the messages across before we figure out how to make uh, subspace transmissions work but what's, what's going to happen when it's like the voyage home where he gets the message out there then the alien race comes back and so we want the mount and and like yeah there's like, no mount he's, he's gone, he's gone. He's been yeah. gone. we have it's no like, mounts <laughs> your world has destroyed the ensign we will destroy you we want the ensign yeah it's like oh sorry guys no ensign <laughs> well if anyone's going to send me an alien message you know from outer space i would definitely want it to be ensign mount that is for certain 
And that's his last name. It's not a verb. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Damn right it is. (laughs) Patrick would love to do that, but that's that's another story. (laughs) Um, The only news that I have coming up here is that for those of you that are on Earth next year, June 25th to June 27th, 2021, Star Trek will be in Germany, Destination Star Trek Germany. And it's coming to Dortmund and it's going to be celebrating Voyager so if you guys are out there, be prepared. It's coming. You have advance notice. And if you really like advance notices, February 25th to March 5th, 2022 is Star Trek The Cruise 5. George Takei is going to be there along with a bunch of everybody else. The Porter Call will be out in, in Florida, Miami. So hopefully by then, the way it's going, I understand that we've had some Section 31 working with Earth for the pandemic and they're coming up with a, a vaccine seen. So even though it's supposed to be non-interference directive and the temporal accords are supposed to have been written already, but apparently they're doing some help on that. So that's that's some good news. I would love to go on one of those cruises, but the cost for the cruise is... Oh, it's just crazy. Is, do you, do you want the uh, authentic uniform for cosplay or do you want to go on the cruise? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's about the same price. That doesn't include your airfare or your hotel stay prior Jeez. to or after the cruise. That's just for the cruise itself. So that's like what an extra five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, right there. Minimum, yeah. Yeah, pretty. I mean, I would love to go, but I just can't. You know, that's that's a little rich for my blood. They they have discounts and stuff, but the cheapest I've ever seen just for the cruise itself was about maybe sixteen hundred. Yeah. Wow. Um, But what what people do is that they rationalize it because if you go on a cruise, you can also there are people out there, and if anybody wants to know how to get a discount, let me know. I know someone in particular who listens to the podcast all the time. They have referral codes that can get a little cheaper. But they also look at if you go to like uh, Star Trek Vegas, by the time you pay for the room, by the time you pay for your food, by the time you pay for all of the stuff you get in the in the vendor room, it comes out to about the same in their, in their mind. So it, for them, it's an equal kind of cost type of thing. Well, and if you've been good, if you've been paying off your credit card bills, you got this credit number lying and, you know, it comes out, they send you a thing, you know, once a month and they say, hey, you got this much available. What it's is like, this paying uh, off credit card thing? I, I have of. no idea. I I've never <laughs> really, this is, this is, I've, I've read about it. I've read about <laughs> it, but they send you a thing and you like, you have money available and you can use it for a massive amount and pay it off eventually. Yeah. Talking about credit card paying off and yeah, I'm really glad I live 20 minutes away from STLV and I like weasel my way in for free <laughs> Weasel. yeah you know you probably shouldn't have said that out you know out loud heather it cause... doesn't matter there's not going to be any more conventions <laughs> well there are but they're just not going to be star trek las vegas it's now it's the 50 year voyage 55 year voyage and it's going to be at caesars and everything and the vendors no, are going to be back, back at rio, back at rio. Yeah. oh it's back at rio it's back at rio yeah. Yeah. oh cool well, let's get ready to get started because it looks like we've had all the news and everything. First off, oh my God, what a show again. They keep upping everything. So it's phenomenal. We uh, need to rename this for, instead of Star Trek Discovery. It's got to be Star Trek Giorgio. <laughs> because the bitch is stealing every scene she's in. <laughs> <laughs> she's so awesome. Well, she's going to have her own coming up soon. Okay, Heather, please, if you will. Okay, so here we go. This week, we watched Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 6, Scavengers. This originally aired on Thursday, November 19th, 2020. The teaser is first. Don't begrudge the messenger. Discovery is welcomed into Starfleet and given a 32nd century upgrade. After both the ship and the crew level up, they are hailed by an approaching vessel driven by none other than Grudge the Cat. The Queen carries a message from Book. He found one of the black boxes Michael was searching for, and when he went to go investigate, he was caught. We must rescue him. But Saru, the party pooper, reminds Michael that they have sold their souls to the company Starfleet. And they are on call. So they'll have to work before they can play. Michael follows orders in front of Saru, but behind his back, she convinces Giorgio to play hooky and skip out on work with her. Time to go save book. Consequences be damned. Hmm. 
the beginning of this episode, it was cool seeing the discovery being worked on. You saw everybody's excitement with the new console, with everything that's going on, and and the the sheer joy they had. Like this is so cool <laughs> when they were using the manipulative matter. So I thought that was that was awesome to see. So freaking cool! It was amazing. They hit that much of it with you know, right in the beginning. It's just like wow, you're got upgrades, but these upgrades yeah. are like oh my god, these are the upgrades. They're so cool. They upgraded the pad to a pad. Now it's a personal access display and no longer a device. So now it's no longer pad. It's 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 a pad. It's a tricorder and a transporter and a comms yes. all in one badge. So freaking cool. And they're trying to figure out how to learn it because it's like handing an iPhone to somebody that's over 70. It's like, here, you figure it out. <laughs> Oh my I, god! I, I think they call them. I I think I, I I'm trying to find it, but I think they call them Tricom badges now. I believe so. Yeah. That sounded correct. Yeah, they, yep. they they said it in the after show. A little, they have a little more detail on it. They actually have if you if you motion a certain way, it does things, and you opposite that, it and it goes away. And if you tap on it, it takes you to home. You know that kind of thing. And, and poor, Linus. poor Linus. Oh my god. <laughs> No, no, it wasn't. Okay, I'll get into this later on the episode, but there's no poor Linus about it. That dude was having fun. (laughs) He's just in random play on that sucker. He bounced everywhere. (laughs) He was so funny. He's all, new badge. Uh, Oh, sorry. Oh, new badge. You know, just like, oh my God. I popped it on you in the the sonic shower. (laughs) Oops, I'm sorry. Sorry. (laughs) This is in the mess hall. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's like, we're going to come back next week and Linus is still going to be doing Oh, well, new badge! Like Linus, it doesn't work anymore. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna call HR. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why is the only time your badge doesn't work right is when I'm in the shower? Exactly. <laughs> or having sex. Or having sex in the shower. No. Like they don't hello? have sex on. They don't have sex on Star Trek. What are you talking about, dude? Okay, we're gonna get into this later <laughs> on. Don't. But he he popped into a turbo lift, and that is notorious place for sex. Okay, like now, that is notorious. Uh, it, was a, it was a quite impressive place to pop in, but how does it know that there's actually going to be a lift there in the in the turbo lift tube? What if you pop in there and the lift isn't there? Dude, he You'd popped in and he down. was totally. You would fall straight down. Yeah. Nah. And then um, I can't believe dots like they still have the dot bots fixing ships in 3189. Like that's, a, you know, they're still having well, the same technology fix the ships like a thousand years later. Well, I think that I think those were just um, those were just discoveries bots. I don't know. Do, there's new there bots was a added one in there too. Yeah, it had a sleeker more look to it. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's just upgrades. Well, some technology. No, some technology you figure will basically stay the same all the way through. I mean, look how long we've been using pencils. Yeah, you know, yeah. and look how long we when when you have a design that's functional and it works. Spoons. There's not much. Yeah, exactly. Spoons, forks. You know, you're mm-hmm. right, Heather. Fork so you. It, yeah. So, <laughs> well, that's because of that. <laughs> I'm going to make sure none of the crew spoons you. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank God. A, Patrick what, spoons what? the tribbles. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's probably how that. No, happened. it's it's the it's the Rijack Five turkey. <laughs> so. Did you guys notice that um, on Discovery that there was a new registry number? It had a dash A. Yep. It had a new A. Yep. Yeah. So it's NCC one zero three one dash A. Because it's being redone now. Did you also guys notice that they gave them detachable nacelles? Right. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't, guys. Detachable nacelles always makes me think of the song "Detachable Penis." Penis. Yeah. I had a feeling you. <laughs> Going there. Well, I mean, they want it for better maneuverability. And if you got a detachable penis, it's definitely maneuverable. I woke up this morning <laughs> with a bad hangover and my penis was missing again. That's the way the song starts. It's it's a great song. If you haven't heard it, you got to go get that one. But uh, I can't. It's the only thing I think about when I see the detachable nacelles. Mm. And one of my favorite quotes in this section was at the very end when Michael was talking to Giorgio and she's like, are you in or out? And Giorgio is like, you had me at unsanctioned mission. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. I love her. I, I, I love the little 
of modern day things that flip into here, like the You Had Me At. Because uh, mm-hmm. You Had Me At was the first time I heard that was um, the Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. yeah. You Had, yeah. Me, you at had me At Hello. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's funny is when Michael was telling Saru, you know, that about the black box that, that Book had found and that, you know, she didn't think the burn happened all at once because there was microseconds between, you know, these two ships that they already knew about blowing up and the third one could help them pinpoint an origin. Yeah, triangulate it. Yeah. And Saru's like, no, we have to, you know, the Admiral said we have to do this. And then, and Michael's like, yes, sir. But she's like looking at him like, bitch, I ain't preparing to know nobody to jump to Argus. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's, it's really, it, it, if you look at it and go, well, this is, you know, you've got to be able to figure this out and work, make this work for everybody. Cause Saru can be captain and Saru can follow orders, but Saru needs to be able to know when to bend the orders and when to break the rules. And mm-hmm. this is gotcha. an opportunity to say, maybe we should, you know, help this person out over here. We kind of got to do this real quick. And plus we can pop in and pop out real quick. We got the spore drive, you know? Right. Well, and plus books, book pretty much, you know, helped save Michael for that whole year that, you know, yeah, the discovery hadn't come through the wormhole yet. So, I mean, and we're not saying we've got to go, you know, bail his ass out every time he gets, you know, locked up on a slave planet. But no, at this point the, we should. It's the least she could do. The at least the, yeah. she could do. very least. Yeah. Well, so speaking well, from a command's point of view, the reason why I understand and agree with Saru is because interspace, subspace communication is not a thing yet. So if they were to go off on some area on the other side of the space and if they needed discovery to go somewhere, there's no way in hell that they would know that. You need backup. Because they can't communicate. They can't communicate. You got to have backup at least. Yeah. Yeah. They got to go fix those subspace relays. Wait, wait, wait. I need to ask a stupid question. So better than anyone. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so if it took three weeks for the ship and grudge to get to Starfleet, why did it take Michael and um, Giorgio like 30 minutes to drive there? Well, we don't know for certain how long it might have taken. Well, I mean, there was a delay in the time. Yeah. I'm, and yeah. that's a very good question. Well, I mean, plus they had to lithium. So maybe they were using oh. warp trap. I mean, I don't know what the status is on using. It was book ship, though. Yeah. yeah maybe book ship is faster than, than most. We don't know. The maybe specs. No. I mean, it was book ship it both ways. Well, it took them three yeah. weeks to get into the trouble he got into. I think that's what happened. The, no, the ship was set to the ship was set after 24 hours to come find Michael. And that was three weeks ago. That's right. Now I've got that yeah. written down. So, so it took three weeks to like drive from there to here. So did it take three weeks? Well, maybe he just had it on impulse engines on, you know. When you have a cat piloting your ship, it takes a while. It was on <laughs> Pilot. The ship <laughs> you know. passed by a little piece of string, and it was a little piece of string <laughs> in space, and okay. it was stuck there for that three weeks while it. the cat was playing with a piece of string. That that's a perfectly good explanation. I am totally good with that. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Or Grudge fell asleep on the phaser controls, and it started chasing the laser beam around for three weeks. <laughs> Grudge went by the laser beam and the string nebula- nebulas. <laughs> Uh, and then he took a nap. <laughs> and then he took a nap. Yeah. She took a nap. Yeah. Okay. That totally explains it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go back to the attaching those nacelles. I believe I know why the starships haven't attached uh, detached nacelles. Do you, Rocky? Just out of curiosity. Well, there were there were a couple of reasons I thought about on Twitter that I was looking at. I mean, one, of course, they mentioned the maneuverability. I mean, you can do some crazy ass maneuvers if you can bend those suckers, you know, a certain way, you know, and being not detached, you can really, you know, do some hang some curves if you want to well, you know. A good example is the end of the episode where Michael does the U-turn with book ship. Yeah, if you can reconfigure your ship on the fly, you can do amazing things. And that's kind of part of it. The other side of it, I was looking at people saying, you know, because of the burn, all the ships exploded right away. Well, if you get the nacelles detachable, maybe you can, maybe it's a a self-preservation kind of thing. Maybe it won't take out your entire ship if you, you know, you may not have any nacelles after it explodes, but at least you'll still be there. Outstanding. Once again, you've you've inspired and realized that my faith in you to submit you for the O'Brien Award was justified. That's exactly right, because in the nacelles, the warp cores now are inside the nacelles. So if they needed to go, if they were going to explode, it's easy enough to just get the ship out of there and, and toss the nacelles away. So you save the crew. It also lets your ship do like low rider moves at warp. And yeah. if they- Low if- rider. <laughs> That's the real reason do you want to have detachable nacelles because you can just put that, you can make that sucker hop, you know. Remember Lower Decks where the ship got caught by that arm and then uh, the the ship tried to warp away and it was totally disintegrated because the arm like was holding it. That's why they have a detachable uh, part. (laughs) The nacelles will leave and you will still be there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
It, it allows for more cartoon animation style. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And to see Giorgio and Michael basically is like mother and daughter reading. And, you know, she's. And you could see that she understands. She has the wisdom of the mother or, you know, a superior to understand, you know, you're you're burning Saru. You're dropping him in a fire, is I think is what well, she said. Should this, we? She, yes. She's putting Saru into a hard place by doing this. And Giorgio says, hey, I understand, you know, you're doing this, right? But you had me. I'm down. I'm still down. I'm unsanctioned mission. Where let's go, girl. Yes. And yes, Heather, we should. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's all I got to say about. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we did the teaser pretty good. OK, so we'll move on to act one. Book finder as Michael and Giorgio drive to the salvage yard and they get in a little spat about Michael's love life. Giorgio suddenly checks out and flashes back to when she was a Terran emperor. She has blood on her hands and she says, son, uh, she snaps out. They arrive. Giorgio checks back in just in the nick of time. And then she handles the shift manager with ease. This is why you hire someone with experience instead of your nephew. They go down to the planet and Michael uses her cat tracker to find her cat book. They find him with the nephew and the nephew is doing tests on one of the collars that they have on their necks to unfortunately an unfortunate soul who had his mind blown by this new product. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Wow. That was cheesy. Heather, my God. <laughs> that was a bad synopsis. Doing I could have done. He wasn't I, doing a test. He was being a dick. Yeah, he Oh really my God. Was a dick. He wanted oh. to test off the perimeter. What an no. asshole. He was being an Jesus. asshole, is what he was he, doing. The guy just wanted a fucking extra drink of water. No, you don't yeah, just don't behead he, the motherfucker. What he the hell? Was an asshole. Oh he my God. That's what happens when you give a small dick men power. <sighs> Jesus yes, Christ. I agree with that. He was definitely a bully because, again, how easily he was cow tied down to when Giorgio was like really kind of going in all in on him. It's right. like, you don't look smart enough to run this dump. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it when Giorgio said, you know, he's just a bully and they crumble like a cookie when they meet a bigger one. It, my favorite line from her is like, if I wanted your eyes on me, I'd wear them around my belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or when he's going, um, um, she's like, form a sentence. Intense. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was ready to form a sentence when she said that. <laughs> like, two snaps up, go girl. <laughs> she knows how to handle she, bullies. She called him a fucking meat sack. I mean, right? who gets called a meat sack in this universe? And if you guys know bullies, they all crumble like that when you're an asshole to them. If you must meet an asshole and you're a bigger asshole, they're going to run away crying, just like this guy. Pretty much. And, and you do know that Michael did say love. Oh, yes, yeah. he did. That was yeah. that was your Freudian slip, right? Like, like right in front of your I face. I didn't love on this ship. Yes, you did, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's funny, Mike, when Giorgio's like, what does this cat lover have that made you fall for him like a two year old at the edge of a well? <laughs> that was a pretty, pretty graphic fall right there. It's like yeah. it, it's two year olds be falling off wells all the time, though. And Michael's like, you can't talk about this with me because you have the emotional spectrum that runs from cranky to homicidal. So, yes. <laughs> it's like, what are you what are you doing? It's like the cat finder. It's like, please, that cat has its own gravitational. <laughs> yeah. right? Grudge took a little bit of the, 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 the poking here. <laughs> a little bit more poking than he should have gotten, but or she should have gotten, but she's and she is kind of large and in charge. When uh, Giorgio says, Oh, the things we do for love, Michael's like, let's find what we're here to find before I strangle you. <laughs> Giorgio had all the best lines in this entire act. I mean, she I'm did. telling you, it's episode. gotta be called Star Trek Giorgio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really could have been. If I wanted to kill you, I wouldn't need a weapon. They'd name a holiday after me. I mean, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. she, I mean, she read him to filth. The library was oh, open yeah. and he got read. Yo, he met his match. <laughs> Is this the section also where we have Tilly doing the cat yes. yoga? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Did yeah. you eat her? <laughs> I love that. that was hilarious. Find Burnham. Burnham is not on the ship. Did you eat her? It, it, the very first thing Tilly does is, is put a grudge on her back. I mean, not on purpose. Grudge just kind of climbs up to the nearest shoulder. And then next thing you know, you're bent over and there's a cat on your back. But, you know, you've got, you've got, all the time. You've got goat <laughs> yoga and you've got grudge yoga. <laughs> Yo. And then grudge runs under the bed until he's like, I don't like you. Uh, yeah, that's what these cats can do is they just... Uh, did, did you didn't hear any uh, notification sounds, did you? Is I it just that. in my head? I don't know what you're here talking yeah, about. Okay. <laughs> Sorry I totally about that. heard that. Alexa, shut the fuck up. Is that one of your teams finally discovered why the light wouldn't come on? I'm working <laughs> on it. I might have to get a new light bulb. <laughs> 
Hey, and did you guys know in this in this scene we we see book on the whatever dump that he's being a slave in the Andorian without the antennas, Rin. Rin, yeah, that is a woman. Really? Yes, that is no played shit. by a woman. Oh uh-huh. wow! I I saw something online where they were showing the makeup process, and she definitely had boobs. So yeah, it was a woman. <gasps> what a singing voice! That is so cool. Yeah, I totally thought it was a man. I mean, I, I mean, did they, too. I'm gonna have to the, watch it again. She now. did a good job. Yeah. I, mean, I think they probably had to modulate her voice, but because I mean, it, it did sound more masculine than feminine, but the makeup effects were spot on. I mean, I. Well, I've met some women that look better as men than some men do and vice versa. Yeah. If you watch, if you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, you can see some of the men look a lot prettier as women. Oh my God. Yeah. They look gorgeous. Like how the hell do you look that good? They can do the hair well. They could do the makeup well. I'm like, hands down, you are way better at being a female than I am. (laughs) Seriously. For I sure. just want to say, what, what's up with the dude? Uh, was his name Lai? La? Lay. He, Lay? Yeah. He, Lay. Uh, he should have been wearing red. Right? <laughs> he should have been wearing red. Why didn't they kick his uh, their butts? Why didn't he save the guy? Like, they should have saved the guy. I he was Bajoran, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Maybe maybe he didn't uh, share any of his stolen water or something. I don't know. It was very strange because he went, yeah. He made a run for it. And uh, I saw the moving The Running Man. It doesn't end well. No. no they were, he blown. wasn't in a position. They weren't in a position to save him just yet. Yeah. Because they had just got there. They didn't know uh, much about stuff. And, and they weren't really even aware of that gate until that little display. So the guy kind of did himself in. Yeah, and it really just showed how much of a dick uh, Toller was. Mm-hmm. And, and Giorgio, again, shows just why she's going to be such an asset to Section 31. She's like, I want that tech. <laughs> and it's like, how much for it? He's yeah. like, it's not for sale, it's proprietary. Where's the controls? Upstairs somewhere. No, you're fiddling in your pocket with it. So it's <laughs> she's <laughs> very observant. She's very quick. You can't fuck with that woman. She will nope. own you. She yeah. will own you. Yeah, for sure. And then um, during her flashbacks, when she was like a Terran emperor and the like blood are, is on her hands and she says, son, um, we also see Giorgio's ship, the USS uh, Charon. And in Greek mythology, uh, Charon was the ferryman that would bring newly dead souls mm-hmm. to Hades, like a, one soul for one coin. And I wonder if that has anything to do with her character or anything. Mm, that's a good question. Mm, yeah. Something we could dive into. OK. And if you guys got any good hookups on self seal stem bolts <laughs> uh, uh, they're way over they're way over there in the back oh oh in the back okay yeah, in the back. I'll, I'll be right back under everything way <laughs> under everything very deep when Giorgio mentioned that she wanted some pre 24th uh, century tech the nephew shows her a late 24th century era phaser and the phaser they showed was the same phaser that we see in uh, first contact voyager and deep space nine and it's like technically barely pre 2400s and this style actually came around 2370, just to sort of geek out a little bit, which is why Georgia said that she uh, didn't want it because she was searching for something in the 2250s in her time period and not the 2300s. Well, they just don't make them like they used to. I mean, the old stuff is, you know, the solid stuff. Mm-hmm. You see that tricorder she pulled out and like, whoa, that thing's older than my Casio over here. I mean, yeah, good but golly. She, she wanted to have like her stuff. No, and it has all original parts and it still works hands off <laughs> yeah it's good it's good good quality yep. stuff right there i also <laughs> yeah. love the appearance again of the uh fist held phasers or the i like to call them fisters no. i'm not no. gonna touch that one <laughs> don't get patrick going <laughs> i'm not gonna touch no. that one <laughs> but let's get back to the ship just for a little bit let's talk about how much adira is making that's the next section their presence their presence no yeah adira that's is. the next section yeah, act two it is? Yep. Yes, it yeah. is. Should we move you know to Act 2? We should. Just get everything. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do that since I inadvertently leaped over the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Act 2, the perfect plan. Michael finds a way to get Book alone and they formulate a plan for a jailbreak. Luckily, Book has the black box in his room so they don't have to search for it. Michael and Giorgio stall while the plan is put into place. On discovery, Adira updates the spore drive to use a nano gel instead of the old fashioned port and the captain notices his number one is missing and makes the decision to report this to the Admiral. Right, with um, Adira just like, I mean, this kid is smart, man. Yeah. 
and the fact that um, they were able to help Stamus with his arms, with the biomedic gel. You know, at first he was kind of pissed off a little bit, but being back with Colbert has gotten him to be more gentle. And rather than really going off about the the room being changed around, he was like, okay, you know, this kid is really smart. Well, when they jump you that far into the future, and as far as technology, he's he's like still a kid in a candy store. I mean, yeah. he may have said he can't find anything, but it's still awesome. So he's in a good mood. When you have when your nano gel is a, is a quantum transducer, that's way better than having to stick um, stick ports in your arms. No. Uh-huh. residue no residue at all you just you know put them in take them out nothing it's beautiful so technically adira is like our neelix she's our guide to the 32nd century like neelix was a voyager's guide to the delta quadrant yeah but neelix was morale and, and a chef adira is way more than that but adira is still a guide so that's how she's like neelix yeah but that's the cool thing trill. about a trill is, is a trill can be a lot of things because a trill is a lot of things. You know, the many past lifetimes of experience in that person. There are tri- a- there are a trillion different things. <laughs> Well, oh, I don't know. Here we go that, with the bad that <laughs> Not that many, but a lot. <sighs> Come on, it was that, that was an obvious joke. Yeah. yeah it was. <laughs> and what? then you have Linus popping in and saying, sorry, <laughs> you badge. Oops, sorry. Dude, the way he said that, you know the motherfucker knows what he's doing. And now he's just like going around having fun he's with it. He's just fucking with everyone. He's just popping Yeah, now he's just screwing with everyone. Oops, like, sorry. oh, let's see, if, let's see if everyone will take this uh, excuse, you know, at face value and he's just popping around everywhere. He's oh, just popping back and laughter everywhere. Personally, yeah. personally, oh, this is in the mess being, hall. I, I think he's being nosy. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, he is. He's a voyeur. <laughs> you know, he's going around just looking because of those big eyes. He's got to see everything. Uh-huh. Especially them smooching. And the way he said it and he put his th- his hand over his mouth like he was like some dainty little, you know, oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> oh, he totally you know. meant that. Yeah. yeah. He's totally going around boy- voyaging, voyaging, Voyager, you were going to say Voyager. <laughs> yeah, I was, but I couldn't come up with the word. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, oh, and then, so t- then Saru comes to Tilly and is like, um, where's Michael? And she's like, I know. And then she's mm-hmm. like, Shit, 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 shit. And she yeah. was like, my sentiments exactly. Yeah, I like that part. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it shows how much they couldn't grow. Okay, uh, she made a choice. This is the line Tilly said. She made a choice, and because of that, you don't have one. You mm-hmm. have to tell the Admiral. Yeah. Um, and you, it's it's a situation, if you put your superior into a position that you're forcing them to do something, it's not cool, especially if you don't talk to them about it. That shows the yeah. growth in Tilly that she, you know, realizes, hey, you know, you, you have to tell him this because if you don't, and he finds out, you know, the rest of us are going to get, you know, painted with the same brush, same brush, you know, and that's not fair to the rest of the crew. Right. Well, you, we have a chance to see how much, like you said, Tilly, as well as Saru has grown because first off, Tilly would have normally tried to make some excuse to come to Michael's defense, just like he said. And then when Tilly turned around and said, shit, 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 the old Saru would have admonished her for cursing. <laughs> But no, he's yeah, like, now he's like, yeah, I yeah, totally he's agree. Like, yeah, he sees where she's coming from. <laughs> Sometimes and, cussing is the only adjective that works. I Yeah, completely. And then uh, Saru says that he has not felt this mistrusting of Michael since they were on the uh, Shenzhou. Shenzhou. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Shenzhou. Shenzhou. Shenzhou, yeah. Um, and this is a reference to the first episode of Discovery, the Vulcan Hello, where uh, Burnham attempts a mutiny. So, yeah, it's it's really a uh, feeling sad for this relationship between the two, because it was like we had that one moment, the last episode where it was Captain number one. I mean, it was such a great moment between the two. And now we're at this point. It's like, I can't fucking trust her. What am I going to do? Right. Well, yeah, you had a, and she did put him in a bad position. Everybody warned her on that. That really was a bad position to put Saru in. Even Georgia warned her. It's like, you're putting yeah. him in the fire. I mean, come on. Yeah. You no. Know, and she was like, I didn't start the fire. <laughs> the fire is <laughs> you know, but what can you do? So, yeah, so he he had to. I I agree with Tilly. Sometimes you got to do things that are for the betterment of the ship. 
Yeah, you know. Okay, and then um, so back on the planet, Giorgio's like um, his death was efficient. <laughs> it's like, give me that fence. I'm gonna buy it. Let let me get it now. That's what was happening on the planet th- at this point. And uh, and then they 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 go back off and they're 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 looking for all the cool spare parts they can get. And he's like, uh, oh, he sends a drone to follow him. Don't leave a drone to do your own dirty work. I mean, if you would have followed them personally, well, something else would interesting probably would have happened. But they followed him with the drone and the drone. Uh, can't take a bat to the head. No, nope. but that's that's in Act Three. Do you want to move on? To Are Act you three? sure? Yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm sure. pretty sure they hit the yeah, drone, and then in Act Three happens. This is see. This is what happens when you don't have commercials. Yeah, I guess so. Stop paying for the no commercials. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Come to my place. Watch it without commercials. It's awesome. <laughs> I have commercials. That's how I know which where where things go. Me too. Com- commercials but here all the way. It fades to black and there's a pause. <laughs> I know where the commercials go. It's not like I haven't worked in television before. <laughs> But you haven't worked in 3189 television. I guess not. Uh, so there. Eh. Do you guys have anything else to say on Act 2 before we move on to Act 3? No, uh, let's, let's go ahead since, nope. you know, our chief engineer jumped in with both span rods. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Jumping in head first. Okay. Act 3, Escape the Kennel. Michael and Giorgio allow themselves to be captured and are taken to the command center. They fight free, steal the gate remote, and turn off the fryer, allowing everyone to escape this cage. Michael and Book are reunited, and Book gives her the black box. Reunited because it feels so good. Boop. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I think it, and it feels so good. Isn't that what he said? Well, they, I, don't, I don't think it's cuz. I think it's and. Yeah. Well, they both, well, they both feel good. It feels, yeah. As long as it feels good, I, I guess, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is where Giorgio has the um, another flashback. Mm-hmm. Someone must have given her some good Andorian mushrooms because damn. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't look like she was enjoying it, though. It's just the wrong time, too. I mean, but you, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> hey, when when you do mushrooms, you don't always enjoy it. Mm. I don't do so, mushrooms. Yeah. Well, in the flashback, uh, Giorgio sees her hands covered in blood and she says son again. And, but this time we see uh, Lorca falling to his death. And that was from uh, the past prologue. And I was OK with that because he was falling to his death. And then the hologram Giorgio confronted Michael also, too, from the episode The Wolf Inside. And Michael was brought before Emperor Giorgio in the episode Vaultine Ambition. So we saw those flashbacks. Are you pausing uh, well. it and looking at the flashback like frame by frame? Hell yeah. How else <laughs> do you expect me to do it? <laughs> I, I, have, I just let it go right by and like uh, something crazy happened. There was blood. This is No, this is why I watch it five times. <laughs> okay. Like pause, stop. Wow. Okay, write stuff down. Go. Okay, pause. I'm literally pa- it takes me hours to watch a one hour episode because oh, wow. I'm pausing it's, so much. It's amazing. You catch yeah, all, I, the, all the I details. Pause all the t- I pause all the time too to write stuff down so Mm -hmm. i pause to get up and go take a leak and come back to it when i'm done (laughs) why don't you just wear like those nasa diapers and then you don't have to i mean it is star trek but come on (laughs) you guys are so inefficient just put in a catheter oh my god oh man that's why we hear you scream once a week (laughs) (laughs) gotta change the tubing <laughs> well, yeah. it explains how the captain's so efficient. That's right. The captain's so, got tricks. You don't take a <laughs> shit. You don't take a shit unless you got to pee at the same time. So you sure. just make one trip to the bathroom. Two, two birds, one stone. <laughs> there you go. What do you guys think about the flashbacks? I'm wondering what's gonna. I mean, obviously they mean something. I still, I still think, as I said before. That in this time when they're when Giorgio is separated from the the Terran universe, uh, as the uh, the guy explained before, I think it has something to do with her being not as close to the alternate universe. Well, I think it's uh, it, I think it is time related, like you're saying, but I think it's I think it's her post traumatic stress. It just takes a lot longer to get to her because she's been through so much, and maybe some of it wasn't as stressful, but some of it was, and that's what we're seeing. I think is actual the stuff that mattered to her. Do you think that um, Giorgio had a son, and then maybe like she caused his death or something, and is feeling guilty about that? And then we know how you know Burnham was like a 
daughter to her. So you have that son and that daughter thing. And then the daughter, mm. Burnham, uh, basically she... The relationship is triggering things within her that she doesn't want to have to deal with. And she it's coming up anyway. Right. Because we know that basically Mirror Universe Burnham stabbed Giorgio yeah. in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Giorgio and says that, she's like, um, Michael says, trust me. She's like, well, another Michael Burnham said that to me. And we all know how that turned out. Exactly. And she was yeah. sincere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the way she, and the way she said that too, there was like, there was venom in her voice. There, mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't just like a remember this. That was a fucking remember this. Right. That's like, I know part of your character that mm -hmm. you might not realize. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. But if you guys think about it, would the prime universe Giorgio, you know, say, trust me. And then the mirror universe Giorgio, would you ever trust her? No, you would never trust the mirror universe, but you might trust the prime universe and Michael's the prime universe. But Michael's already shown Giorgio that she can't be trusted. I mean, ah. by breaking, you know, yeah. breaking command rule. Um, by yeah. going on this it's, mission. It's not, yeah. There's certain levels of non-trustworthy. Yeah, That's a good point. I, I, I still think that Kovic has something to do with Giorgio's action that way. I thought because you said COVID. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> she's, got, she's got COVID in 3189. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really think because of the simple fact that she was in total command before she met him. Hey, she's been through all kinds of shit. And then she meets him. We we don't see the full result of that interview that she had with him. And then right after that, she's standing in the middle of the of the deck, staring off into space with this flashback. And now she's had him a couple of times now. I really think that guy from Blade Runner did something, you know. Well, you know what? It could have been some, maybe, yeah. maybe the hollows who were interviewing her, maybe like they're strobing did something to trigger like you know some kind of seizure disorder but hers is like flashing back to you know past events no well, this is going to be an easter egg that they're putting through you know and we that's going to be something hopefully by the end of this season we'll find out what's going on with her yeah they're giving us little bits at a time and, and it's starting to make sense a little bit now but we're not exactly sure which way it's making sense I'm pretty impressed with the setups that they're doing with the characters. You know, um, the setup with Giorgio, the setup with Detmir. I really like what they're doing. Yeah, they're playing long game in a lot of this. Yeah. Bo show. But the short game stuff, I mean, the action in this in this, this act was awesome. They got the breakout happening. Mm -hmm. uh, that was cool. And they got the little battle going on on the little bridge of the of, of book ship. And then and when Giorgio uh, shoots down the ships and basically I'm thinking that's going to come back and bite her. In the ass because Osira is going to come back and like cut a bitch. Oh, like, yeah. Chick fight. I can't wait for them to meet because you know that's going to be one hell of a bitch fight right there. Yeah. Well, you know that's happening yeah. for the simple reason that she he just she just took out <laughs> this Osiris's. Uh, salvage salvage this, salvage. you son of a bitch. And, yeah. yeah. And boy, was that some awesome 3D animation when the, the ship exploded. Yes. I love the work those guys are doing. Little shots like that are just fucking cool. My money's on Giorgio all the way. Osiris has. Osiris Osira has no chance. <laughs> Unless Giorgio has one of her panic attacks. Yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens there. Yeah. And we got to get uh, Patrick that badge uh, that they have because if something goes wrong and somebody's trying to like molest Patrick, he could double tap and get out of there really quick. <laughs> Because that's what George is like. I was just beginning to have some fun. I want the uh, the badge for the pad so I don't have to use the pads anymore. <laughs> That is really cool, that technology. Now we just got to wait for someone. Someone has already 3D printed it, but it's raw. So it's only a matter of time for it's going to be available to buy for the next cosplay. I really think that sometimes you got the special effects people are going, what can we get the cosplay community to go nuts over? And they can't get it right now. Oh, so what wow. Can we do? Yeah, the, the extras uh, in the, the red room, when they they did a little detail on how they make that badge and the gold little part on it is hand painted on those fuckers mm -hmm. yeah. every single one of those is hand painted i mean you've got to you've got to get to the detail love into one of those things put those suckers together if somebody loses one of those like oops it fell off i don't know where it went you're gonna get in big trouble yeah oops it fell off and went into my pocket sorry <laughs> oh that's where it went sorry oops it fell off and went into the toilet yeah you know what you don't want to drop your 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 iphone in the toilet you don't want to drop your your tricom badge. badge into the toilet yeah, yeah it doesn't that would not be good. It's not good no 
definitely would not be. But that badge, I guarantee within the next two months, we're going to be seeing it everywhere to buy on Etsy and every place else as people get it down. We're going to be seeing that bad badge in a, uh, a bowl of rice trying to soak the water <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, trying to get it cleared out. <laughs> we're going to see that badge that's, everywhere. That's what's going to happen to Linus because he's going to double tap it one time and then it's going to fall and then transport while it's falling. And it's just it's going to no. beam his fucking toilet to somebody else's room. He's going to be sitting there going, where'd it go? <laughs> Either that or Linus is going to beam into a shower and get his ass punched. Well, the one time he pops in on Giorgio at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's going to kick his ass. She he was. might like that, though. He likes her. No, well, he does like her. You don't know if that, you know, turns him on or not. <laughs> he does like her. But also, you get a chance to see this. With spite Giorgio's rimming, you see that Michael does have feelings for Book. I mean, that mm-hmm. hug that it, it took him for her to realize that he just had been, uh, was possible of him dying or being killed triggers something in Michael. Okay, this is definitely in the next act. No, the hug no, was in the next act. The hug, the hug was not in the next act. That was the before the guy's head blew up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. The hug. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the hug was there and it's like, wow, this definitely, because that was a long hug. Mm-hmm. That was. Like, they yeah. really squeezed each other. Oh, yeah. So, they were hoping <laughs> to, he, he was hoping to squeeze more later. He was getting a woo-hoo-hoo. He was getting a good feel. <laughs> I'm sure when the camera broke away, you saw somebody's reaching for the glutamus maximus. So <laughs> either that or he, he had to adjust himself. Shoot. <laughs> it's like the is that the tubing? Oh yeah, it's a tubing. All right, <laughs> yeah, that's the tubing from that's, way back there. That's, that's very just the deep. uniform. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, is that a phaser? Are you just happy to see me? All right, <laughs> which is why he didn't want to wear the Discovery uniform because it was too. Tight. Right, yeah. Calls attention. <laughs> Calls attention to things. Yes. Those pants are not loose fitting, that's Too for sure. Tight. I, I thought that's why the Starfleet Discovery guys had a, a cups to prevent that. I don't know. I've never looked. Patrick, were you aware? You guys have cups in your uniform? <laughs> No. Okay. okay. Patrick, do There's you your keep, answer? Do you keep <laughs> Patrick, do you keep Willie the one eyed wonder worm in a cup? No, mine is not detachable. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't wear a cup, what are you wearing under that uh, outfit? It's okay, all so. natural, baby. <laughs> um, free, free baller. <laughs> Well, we're not commando. Commando, yep. Is that a burrito in your pocket? Or are you happy to give us a hot sauce? Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the Andorian, you could tell, um, she really wanted to do the honorable thing. And apparently before Andorian had the antennas cut off, that she was a badass because it worked for the Emerald Guard. He, well, the character is a he. Well, he worked for the Emerald Guard. So, and he was a badass. So it's really, it was obviously that person is valuable to them or else they would have had him run through the security gate also well i think they were trying to make a point make a um an example out of example out of him like you know if you if you screw with osira she's gonna you know she'll hurt you Mm -hmm. so yeah osira and Giorgio. yeah remind me not to meet osira that's all i'm saying it's gonna be a definitely a bitch fight that's for certain okay next section okay so act four cat got your tongue adira finally opens up to stamis and tells him that she's talking with her dead boyfriend he promises to believe her as long as she doesn't invite him to a slumber party She promises to take his mushroom injection ports out of his arms instead. As they drive home, Michael learns that Giorgio has no clue what's going on and that this has been happening for weeks. Michael arrives home to a celebratory kiss from Book and a well-deserved demotion from the Admiral. She knew this was coming since, after all, she did disobey orders. At least she got the two things she wanted most, the black box and Book. Oh, I thought she was going to say Book's top lip and his bottom lip. So. <laughs> well, she wanted something on the bottom, but it wasn't the lip. But I'm bald. You know, the, the, I'm bald. the conversation between Giorgio and Michael, I thought was really telling because he's she's like, I know something's wrong. Trust me. And she's like, you had the same look before in the mirror universe. And look what that got me. So apparently her daughter, who Michael kind of replaced in the mirror universe, betrayed her somehow and betrayed her really bad for Giorgio not to even trust but he still loves you know and the look on her face Giorgio knows that there's something wrong with her and 
the fact that the mirror universe is all about showing strength. It bothers her. You could see it rocks her to her core that she has this weakness that she can't identify why. We'll find we'll find out what the I, like I said, I think it has something to do with the fact that the mirror universe is, is so far uh, removed from the current reality that that's what's affecting her. But, you know, time will tell. I we'll wonder if things are playing out more similarly than than they than we think. Then <laughs> maybe things is re- repeating itself in a different universe for Georgia. It's definitely interesting. And I could feel her because if you're a capable person, you're used to doing everything on your own. You're used to being self-sufficient until all of a sudden have something go wrong where you can't fix it. You can't yell at it. You can't antagonize it. And it's it's there. That's a that's that's really kind of earth shattering for a person who's used to operating with no weakness almost. Yeah. Well, in the uh, mirror universe, a vulnerability was a death sentence. So it makes sense why she's really reluctant to tell anybody about it. Mm. And that discussion that Saru had with the Admiral, I have to really, I enjoy him as an actor. He really, he's like, if you came to me, and that was a lesson, and it was a lesson. It's like, if you came to me and told me that this was a thing, I might have deemed this important enough to let you go, but you didn't tell me. And it kind of goes with, shows you that how long Saru's been operating on his own, how long Michael's been operating on his own. So he's basically slapped them in the face to let them know you're not operating on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, and it's hard to figure out when you're thrown into that position. It's not like he went to captain school or anything. Right. Saru's been thrown into this position and he's got a natural ability for it, but he's got to learn some things. They don't just, <laughs> they, I'm sure they teach you some of these things in the handbook. He had to learn on the job. Yeah. On the job training. On the job training. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one thing to say, Hey, this is what's going on. Um, you know, what do you think about this? You know, that's but all he has to do is say, Hey, this is what I got going on. What do you think? That's all, all he's got to do. All he's got to do. At least Saru is, is cognizant enough to say, you know, okay, I realize now in this situation that I made mistakes, you know, as well as you, Michael, you know, so I'm going to look at what I did wrong, you know, and try and, and try and, you know, make a change to that. So, I mean, that's a really good, that's a really good lesson to learn too. Yeah, you know. you learn from your mistakes. And yeah. uh, what it feels like at the end of this episode, Burnham, you know, isn't she's going to make the same mistakes over again. I just I just have that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Think. I'm, <laughs> I'm still thinking that she's going to be captain, though. This is still going to be a road to the captainship. And the reason why is because uh, success is not a straight line up. You got to have failures. So I still think she's going to be captain one day. Well, yeah. But of a Starfleet vessel or, uh, yeah. or, or of the one that she's on, because no. Oh, it's it's like discovery. I don't know. I, I'm I'm worried about Burnham. I think she's got to take a journey to the wrong side. Well, you have to go to the dark I side. Mean, you are my yeah. Son. <laughs> <laughs> you have to fall um, and have problems and have hardships and screw up and make mistakes. So that way, when you do become a captain, you know, one, it's more realistic, and two, it it means more because you had to work for it. You had to like you know pull yourself up out of this pit and you know do something and we got to remember too michael's been on was on her own for a year Mm -hmm. doing things how she wanted to do things so you know coming back into starfleet and having to fall back in line yeah is probably a huge adjustment and so definitely she's going to make mistakes she didn't get demoted per se they didn't drop her rank but they switched her from being first officer and he made her chief of the science where it's basically it's even better than she was when she was first on the signal she was a science officer but she wasn't a chief science officer so he made her chief science officer you know but you can see it really she realized and she had to tell Saru it's like you did the right thing because it's all that hurt him. It yeah, really bothered yeah. him to have to do that. Yeah. And also because he thought that their relationship had gotten better. You yeah. know, I thought I could trust you, Michael, and you didn't. That's a deep hurt. But he was also, uh, like he said, he was also, he was still working under the impression that things could go back to the way they were, uh-huh. you know, and, and you see if they can't. Yeah. You can't. I mean, come on, you're a thousand years in the future. Things are never going to be the way they were. Shit. Even Tilly saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tilly's showing real promise on her road to being a captain as well. Yeah, Tilly's in a better position than Burnham, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Just yeah. as far as, you know, Starfleet's concerned. Now we can go back and talk about the 16-year-old prodigy. You know, the fact that they confide in Stamus sitting there that they were talking to Gray was a big step of trust, you know. And then Gray's like, I like him. <laughs> yeah. 
He's a genius. Yeah. They're all geniuses over there. They're all cool. (laughs) And may I also say this is the first time. Well, no, it's not the first time. Well, in a way, it's the first time we've seen a a same-sex relationship in bed together on Star Trek. No, I think we've seen them in bed together before, haven't we? No, they've seen them in a room brushing teeth, but not in bed in cute little pajamas with badges on them. There, there's someone on Instagram that draws paintings out and they paint these two guys everywhere, you know, doing everything. And that scene in the bedroom reminded me of one of their, their paintings because it looked exactly <laughs> like it, like the same situation. Like, did they see the scene before they painted it? Because it, they, they captured the two guys and the relationship perfectly it was and to see stamus laying there and you see him doing what anybody would do because those things that was on his arms are gone and he's like i i have i have them to thank for you know and it's it's nice it's good to see a functional healthy relationship i was even reading where you have some people who normally do not like gay relationships and they're kind of a little bit on a homophobic side said it was actually refreshing to see a relationship well, it's, it's watching stamus in them together was a relationship yeah it, it is occurred to them it is know? not about that the fact that they're gay it's the fact that exactly. they're in a relationship that's what it's and, all about it's the love well, and that's, the fact that, that star trek is changing people's minds right off the bat it's you get showing them who like wasn't. these are just two people being people well exactly. that's just like star trek has always been you know at the forefront of pushing those kind of norms but um i don't know if you guys ever saw teen wolf the series Teen Wolf. It's, a, it's a really good movie from the eighties, but I think well, it's yeah, no, different. <laughs> but there was a there was a, a six season TV series oh my that they goodness. did, and um, they portrayed LGBTQ people in much the same way Star Trek does. It's completely normal completely okay and the fact that they're gay is is or lesbian or transgender is completely a side note it's just you know normal healthy relationships yeah and that's how it should be that's how it should be portrayed exactly it should be it really should be exactly and i was really happy to read that for someone who normally would never entertain watching a relationship like that for them to affect them and make them realize that this is okay you know so it's good star trek is changing the boundaries again which makes me happy it was a good episode. It's a lot of messages, a lot of breadcrumbs, and a lot of cool technology that's coming up. And we're going to see if Linus is going to actually not how to use that fucking thing. <laughs> He's going to be like expert popper. You pop in over there, do this. Dude, Linus Linus is going to be in HR soon. He's going to have some problems. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God he's not on the ship and we don't have that type of thing that's going on here. <laughs> and we thought our HR department had problems. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Now, I understand our computer person here, Patrick, has an appointment to see about. I think you're beaming over to talk to the Jim Hadar, you and Heather. Yep. Um, are we? Or you're supposed to be doing that tomorrow. What What's going on? You, you haven't been prepping? <gasps> I have another prep to do. I have to do this alone? But you also, you're supposed to be going to the Jemadar tomorrow. That's why you got to get ready to leave now because of the travel time. You're taking Dude. the shuttlecraft, you and Heather. What's going on with you? Seriously, pack up. You're not leaving me alone. I guess my holopad's pad's not working right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that's not working hey, right. New, new badge, new badge. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god for a second i thought you said new vag new vag oh like, my god. <laughs> well i was gonna congratulate you now why would those words ever come out of my mouth <laughs> exactly that's why i was so confused <laughs> <laughs> this was a great show again. Thanks everybody for joining us. We're going to go ahead and start wrapping up. Be careful out there as always, or join us again next week when we talk about the next episode where we get a chance to hear Patrick's all about Patrick and Heather's trip. So, and we get to see Vulcans next week. Yes, we do. <laughs> I just hope they don't do the Vulcan nerve pitch on me again. That wasn't fun last time. <laughs> yeah, I, I found out why too. One of them that is in exactly half Vulcan, half Romulan. When they did the Vulcan nerve pinch, they were trying to take advantage of you. So, oh, mm. and he, I just asked him for a shoulder rub. <laughs> Yeah, that was not the only thing he was trying to rub. Thankfully, we got him out of the <laughs> in time. So that's a good thing. Remind me not to do the shoulder rub technique next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Now, you make sure that you not only have just a great week, but make it so. Starfleet Underground, beaming into a podcast feed near you. 
Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to The Collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.